Welcome to the original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, quick hitter edition. We're going to go to New York, five families, uh, going to touch on the Bananos. You know, more than one or two things to, to touch on and to talk about and to report. Um, we're going to touch on about four different subjects in about 10 minutes. Let's see how we do on this. Okay, so... First off, a name that we have not heard in quite a while, our sources at the OG Pod uh, are telling us, uh, not fully back in the mix, uh, not necessarily out of retirement, but is chiming in, and his voice is being heard. I'm talking about Anthony Urso, a.k.a. Tony Green, uh, the protege of Joey Massino. Uh, acting boss of the Bananos in the early 2000s, a guy that uh, is 88 years old right now. He's been out of prison since 2020, Um, Even though he's pushing 90, I'm told that uh, has a lot of esteem and that one of the things that we reported earlier this year this year uh, was the, the the promotion of Bruno Indelicato, Anthony Indelicato, uh, moving into the administration and becoming a consigliere for Mikey Knows Mancuso. Um, we are told now that that was suggested by Tony Green um, advising Mancuso. Mancuso and, and Tony Green, um, they go back. Uh, you know, Tony Green was a, a was a man about town in the Messino era because he was representing uh, Messino on a kind of a day to day basis, bodyguard, driver, right hand man, and uh, you know the power was through was through Messino in that uh, Borgata for you know thirty plus years. Um, so it looks like he would be described right now, or what he's it's being described to me as kind of the conciliaries conciliary um and that him and bruno are, are kind of a tandem bruno's 78 77 78 so about 10 years younger than tony green tony green's kind of you know lost in the crack sometimes of history uh, people don't really remember him as a boss he was a boss in 2003 um for most of that year and then to, into the first couple weeks of 2004 um he's kind of most known for the fact that he was caught on a wire suggesting um that the bananos start killing relatives of cooperators as a deterrent for future cooperators so kind of a dubious uh, honor but he's somebody that uh, has his bona fides and uh you know, he goes all the way back to Big Trini uh, and the Three Capos back in the '70s before he switched into uh, the in the Messino regime. And uh, Mancuso listens to him. So the first kind of, I would say, the first part of the plan to stabilize the Bananos after some unrest in '22 and '23, it looks like. Mancuso was listening to an elder statesman, and that elder statesman uh, has helped him put the family back together, get on the good side uh, of of Barney and Lorenzo. Um, really, uh, I've said this before, come into his own as a boss, where he's thinking more with his head and less with his gut, because sometimes his gut it can be quite um, deadly. You know, for lack of a better term, he's a two-time convicted murderer, Mikey Mancuso, and he's known to have, uh, you know, he can, he can light a fuse under him pretty quickly. But in his older age, he's uh, matured, just like Bruno and Delicato has. And it seems like it's really benefiting the Bonanno crime family right now. And they're getting a lot of respect uh, from, from other Borgatas because of it. Johnny Joe, uh, Mikey knows his best friend, Underboss, has, has, did an amazing job, I'm told, is, you know, getting rave reviews holding down the fort for the family when Mikey knows was away for about a year this past year for a uh, violation of supervised release. Um, and now I'm being told that 
they might be going one step further in this family remodel and that Tony Green, I mean, again, take this with, this is being floated. There's nothing in stone right now, but I've heard that Tony Green and Bruno and Delicato are asking, advising Mancuso to bring back Joe C, Joe Camerano Jr., um, the man that led the revolt back in 17, the acting boss for Mancuso, who tried to take over the family when Mancuso, Mancuso was finishing up his prison sentence. Um, we all know it didn't didn't work out, even though he won a he won a vote of the capos, but it, the the uh, the move got blocked. Mancuso walks out of prison in late 2018, puts Joe C and all of his loyalists on the shelf. 2022 fight breaks out at a, a, a funeral parlor in Glen Cove when Mancuso told Joe C he couldn't go to his father-in-law's wake. Then over the next about six, eight months, shootings, fire bombings, but everything's tamped down. Um, and I, I also want to report, I, I don't know if Joe C is open to this. Um, I haven't heard that part of it. I've heard that there have been some conversations though, uh, saying that they should bring Joe C back and, and put him back in as a capo. Um, it's pretty surprising. Just like I think bringing Bruno into the administration was kind of surprising, but this is the new Mikey Mancuso. So I, I guess we'll see. I, I've, I've talked to some people in the Bronx who say that he's, uh, he's kind of hot and cold on this, uh, on this idea of bringing Joe C back or bringing people from Josie's orbit back. Um, you know, it's that Bronx versus Brooklyn rub here. Um, but it looks like Anthony and Delicato, Anthony Urso, they're both in, in, uh, being impactful in, in their role as, as elder statesmen. So uh, keep an eye on that. And again, hats off to uh, Mancuso and uh, Johnny Joe for uh, – right in that ship because it was it definitely was careening on the rails for a little bit there um let's move to three smaller stories but still noteworthy in their own right uh there was a bust or there's been actually two busts um uh, in banana world uh in the last couple weeks one in the united states one over in italy in sicily uh, so Anthony Frasconi, former capo, a.k.a. Tony Stutters, a.k.a. Perry Como, uh, a.k.a. Slick Tony, was a capo for a while in, uh, in the Bronx and Brooklyn. And uh, he got arrested, a state case out of Nassau County last week for uh, bookmaking. You know, this is a, you know, a guy that's been around for a long time. Uh, goes back to Big Trini, just like Tony Green does. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what kind of time he's looking at. It's a small, it's a small case. But, you know, he's he's a guy that's a uh, convicted felon. It's not a Fed case, it's a state case. So we'll keep an eye out on that. I want to mention that Frasconi, in relation to the current administration, he comes from the Bronx, um, uh, Di Filippo crew, which gave us Mikey Mancuso and Johnny Joe. Um, I've been told that you could categorize the relationship between uh, Tony Stutters, um, Tony the Hat, Frasconi. Sorry, I forgot that nickname. He's got four really good nicknames. Um, that you could describe them as frenemies. Um, that they at one point were pretty close. And then as Mikey knows was coming into his uh, role as acting boss before he became the official boss. There was a, an, a, a situation that caused some tension between them in relation to who was getting made uh, a guy named little Anthony that Frasconi was promoting uh, uh, Mancuso and Spirito didn't want him. But somehow Frasconi got him made. 
Uh, and this guy ends up being a problem and allegedly slaps Johnny Joe's son. And then they end up having to, to kill him. Uh, so th that seems to have caused some issues, uh, you know, 15 years ago or so. Not exactly sure where he stands with Mancuso right now, but there was the history of them being close and then not so close. Um, again, we'll, we'll we'll track that for you, see how uh, uh, where that goes. Bust out of Sicily, another guy, we talked about Tony Green, a name you haven't heard in a long time. Well, another guy that we haven't heard in a long time, Toto Catalano, Salvatore Catalano, former street boss, acting boss of the Bananos, head of the Zip faction back in the 80s, took up took an extortion pinch in Sicily last week, uh, shaking down restaurants. He uh, went down to the Pizza Connection case, and then uh, uh, I'm, I'm not positive he got deported or if he left on his own in around 2009, 2010. He's old, uh, late 70s, early 80s. Um, so... Yeah, <laughs> old habits die hard for guys like Toto Catalano. Um, last thing, and we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on, on this through the holiday, former Bonanno crime family hitman, Tommy T.K. Reynolds. Uh, if you go on Pacer and you look at his court case right now, it appears that he's on the verge of getting out. Um, he first had a life sentence, a cop to four murders, that took place in the 1990s. He was a part of the uh, Bonanno's uh, kind of Brooklyn JV mob, the Bath Avenue crew under Anthony Spiro, Joe Messino's consigliere and acting boss, and uh, a group of young guys, kind of like a Bronx tale, but brought into Brooklyn. Instead of the 60s in the, uh, in the Bronx, it was Brooklyn in the 80s and 90s. And uh, uh, Tommy Reynolds is the last one in there uh some guys flipped some guys got killed francisco oh for, sorry for fabrizio de francisci uh got released last year he's got a button tommy reynolds is half irish half italian his dad and uncle used to run with the old tony pro crew with the genovese uh mob uh in the 70s he was described in a recent court filing as a mob soldier for the Bananos, but I, I, that could just be kind of an overstatement. But you look at the paperwork and it looks like he's coming out. Word started to filter around social media back in September that he was coming out. He had gotten a series of sentence reductions and compassionate releases where he went from a life sentence to 45 years to 35 years to 30 years to like 26 or 27 years. Um, so it looked like he was coming out like by Halloween. Now it says that officially he's supposed to come out in two years, uh, in, in 2026. And I'm told that there might've been some phone calls made by FBI agents, prosecutors, victims, families, um, when word started to spread that he was coming out soon. A judge can put you in, or sorry, the BOP can put you into a halfway house whenever they want, you know, months, years before your official out date. So he could be in a halfway house any minute now. Um, so we're all waiting. We'll see what happens with that. It looked like he was coming out in September. Now we're heading towards Thanksgiving. Hasn't happened yet. I'm sure there are reasons why, uh, you know, he he's a guy that, that had a, a, a very stellar record behind bars, educated himself, had a, um, you know, a good rapport with, with the staff and other prisoners. So uh, that worked well for him. I think he's got some family health issues, but he also has uh, four murders that, that he uh, copped to, including the murder of a woman, including the murder of Pauly Brascolino, who was the leader of, of the Bath Avenue crew and, and got a hit contract put on him because he pushed Anthony Spiro. So I don't know. Uh, maybe the news starting to drip out in September worked against him. I don't know. I, I guess we can only, time will 
will tell. He could be out by the end of this week, and it, it'll, it won't be an issue anymore. It'll be home for Thanksgiving dinner. But uh, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on it. That's our uh, kind of banana report here, uh, middle of November 2024. Please like, share, and subscribe the OG Pod. Let everybody know that we're here 24-7, breaking news across North America, gangland, underworld, mafia, bikers, drug dealers. We do it all, uncovering the underworld, one city, one region, one country at a time. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod, I'm out. Thank you.